Hello, this is Mark Nelson. What you're about to see is a series of concept drawings and a little demonstration on how I build my concept drawings for my comic book Thunder Hunters. The first set of illustrations are going to be dealing with our fine-finned friends, the fish world. Alrighty, let's sit down and just talk about drawing. <clears throat> Something that I'm really kind of interested in is designing creatures and doing things like that. So I have created a world in the comic book Hunter Hunters, and I need to populate it with different types of creatures. Now, one thing I'm thinking of right now is just sort of a big old fat armored kind of fish of some sort. So all I'm going to do is play a little bit in my mind with some of the shapes that I might think that the body would take on. Now, when you think about fish and you think about different kinds of animals, I think about where they're living what's their role? Are they predator? Are they prey? You know, do they do things when you think of the heavy armored pigs or things like that, that really root into the ground? Um, so how do you really want these things to look and what do you want them to have to do? So you play a little bit what the journalists play with the sort of who, what, where, when, why, how, or I do, I should say which is just something that makes it a lot of fun for me. So I'm gonna put an eye up here, gonna give a big sloped head here. I might even think about, you know, playing with a few things, sticking out. <clears throat> you think about the different kinds of fins. You're gonna have the pectoral fin here coming down. But you know, I might sit down and play with that a little bit as a shape or some kind of a hand thing. You're gonna have your, your anal fin, which can come down and become something else. You know, the final fan at the bottom, I'm going to just give them kind of a droopy thing. And then let's keep this really long and sort of thin. So maybe he becomes a little slicker as he moves up to the surface. So, you know, now it's going to be kind of like thinking, okay, where's the head fit in? Where's the body of the thing? The stomach, you know, the rib cage is that's going to come down. Let's break out some simple forms, a little cross contour in that. Let's give them a body that the, the, the rays stick out on the fins. So, you know, you just keep kind of going along. I try to give them a characteristic of uh, believability. So now I've got some rough shapes laid down. So now let's just come in and start playing with um, refining some of those things. So I'm going to start as an homage to an old student with the eye because I know that he said that one artist he really liked, you know, started everything at the eye, because that's where the center of the soul is in the creature. And I always used to say, you can start anywhere, really. But, you know, I mean, you, you know, it's just kind of fun to sit down and try things different. I don't draw it the same way every time. I, I approach drawing from the, the characteristics I want to try to bring out in the creature or the object that I'm really drawing. Is it safe? Does it look a little bit more vicious? Does it have a you know, smooth quality to it? Does it have a hairy quality? You know, so when I think of drawing a bear versus a fish versus a lizard versus birds, what are some of the shapes, the forms that fit on the surfaces of these animals? And a lot of times, if you look at different kinds of fish. If you go to the shed aquarium or you go to any aquarium and you sit down and you just can see some really beautiful forms and how form follows function in the natural world. You know, I even used to hang out at pet stores. We used to have about six or seven aquariums and, you know, you would stock it with different kinds of fish and I felt pretty good because once in a while I'd get lucky and they would really you know, grow and do things and get really big. And then in one case, my tank burst while I was away. So um, I lost a whole bunch of fish. I came back to a dry tank with a whole bunch of dead fish in it. 
except that there was this big old Pleco that I loved, and he was really huge, and he was in there, and I went to pick him to, you know, get rid of him, and he flopped and moved, so I just picked him up and threw him in another tank, and and he lived for another six six years. He was just a tough little son of a gun. So, you know, that's what's kind of fun. So, in reference to my little Pico, I'll give him some barbells coming down in here. Let's give him a few more just to give him a little more kind of an interest. You know, like sort of like the big old bristle nose Plicos and things like that, which I love. And that's the one thing that I usually do tell people is that you know, research, reference, look at things, watch some of those nature movies. You know, National Geographic's got great ones. The Blue Planet, I mean, David Attenborough has done some absolutely stunning um, videos on animals and birds and, and how they all live and where they go and what they're doing. So, you know, research, reference, thinking about different kinds of things. So like when you think about a fish, you know, you're going to have this big sort of armored head, the flat sort of, you know, with these big planes of just oof, great textures and surfaces. So I'm going to do that, put a little more of that in. Let's spread out his lip. I've decided to make him kind of a toothy little chap too, because I kind of like that idea of irregular teeth. <clears throat> So let's just keep playing along here and let's see what we're going to do. So we'll create that. Now with some fish, which I like, they like there's a fish called a stickleback and its fin sticks up and sometimes it does that to just sort of predatorily scare off other fish. Sometimes it's a defense mechanism. Nature is always marvelous as that, but in a lot of cases they do lie down and they lie down flat. And then when they need to raise them up, they can spring them up and they do it. So in this case, what I'm going to do is lie this guy's top fin down flat. And I'll compress it and just sort of make all the spines fit in there and move along so that they feel more compressed. And then what we can do is give it a little bit of a wiggle here, hopefully. And then we will let that lie against the top of his spine. So let's come in here and let's do what we're going to do. So let's make him sort of a compact little guy. So we'll give him this, this, the tail fin. But for some reason, I just want to play with a shape that becomes almost a little bit more axe like axe, excuse me, like, got something happening with this. You come in and you can design the ventral line, which is what they use to, to keep themselves buoyant and balancing that out. So you can see he's starting to take pretty good shape. And just because I want to make him feel a little bit more clunky and heavy, or as things get older, they sometimes, you know, uh, well, you know, you think about us getting older, we get wrinkles. We get little things that start to change. Our face lengthens, our ears lengthen. All this wonderful stuff that aging does. So a lot of times when you see older fish, they can have such a wonderful character and quality of just looking and feeling old with the trees. You know, when you look at the Joshua trees and you look at all that kind of stuff, it's just amazing to... Um, see what happens and what mother nature does as we get older okay so let's do this let's bring this little edge up let's come in here and let's develop a little bit of a pectoral fin but what i'm going to try and do is just for the heck of it because i can sometimes play with that let's give them almost a very primitive start to a hand so i'm going to give them two kind of claw like rays here. They're going to go back up. And then what we'll do is we'll take the other ones, curl them back just a little bit to give them a different kind of a flavor. And then because he is older, you know, you don't want to have maybe always a nice, beautiful, cute line here. 
clean and pristine. So this is going to be chopped up a little bit because he's dragged it around. He's been nibbled at by stuff. Different things are sort of happening. So all of a sudden, you can see, I think, he's starting to take on kind of an interesting little character here. So let's carry a little bit more of uh, some of this surface back in and underneath. And what we can do is add some of that going down in here, which makes it very easy to sort of unify that texture. Can add a few little darks in there to just bring that out. If I want to create a little bit of a shadow from that fin, I can just do something like that. And then I can also make this feel like it's a little more translucent by even just giving a little bit of a development of a see-through and what we're seeing is you know obviously the opaque body through the translucent fin and then by making the lines a little bit lighter I can add sort of some smaller maybe ray-like feels or wrinkles that could be for compression so now we're going up there so now we're going to come in here and why not I'm going to play with some things that I just want to try here and one thing that I'm thinking about, which could be just a lot of fun, was, is, excuse me, maybe giving him almost a, letting that rib cage or letting some of that spine in his body become almost like an armor so that it's sticking out and um, becomes like a big flap of armor on his body. So all of a sudden, you can see he's taking on a little bit more of an armored kind of feel. And let's come in and develop that ventral line a little bit more by maybe putting a design that might come across his body and do something like this just as an interesting characteristic. Let's add a little bit more in here. Let's bring this up. We'll bring some of those sort of textures in that we had going with some of this just to create that. Okay, and now we're going to come in. And now let's develop the tail. So we'll come in and we'll just do that a little bit there. And let's come down now. And let's start adding this now. Hmm. Just as a sort of a fun aside, what would happen if we came in and we developed another tail section that might stick out like this so it becomes almost a four plane. You have one plane running this way and one plane running this way. So that means we would need to have a surface in here. So let's start to develop this one first and then we can draw the one underneath which you can see is already lightly been laid out so we don't have to not to be confused by anything okay so now that one the rays are starting to come in do 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 we'll cut a little bit there let's cut a little more in here give that there come out get a little fold in the flesh where the muscles might be coming through and let's come in and get more of those plates a little more plate action coming down. We have something like that. Okay. Now you can kind of see as he's taking shape, he's not becoming quite a streamlined shape, which is okay. But he's getting kind of a really heavy. This could be kind of almost like a rockfish or, you know, something that just lies around. It's not known for its shall we say speed or maybe it is maybe it has a real spat fast you know jump and uh can grab things quickly or maybe it sucks the food in as it opens its mouth very quickly in that case like an angler fish we could actually think about giving them a little sort of a uh, excuse me i'm just drawing away here a little fishing device you know, when you see the come up and the little dangle, so he dangles that and brings other fish in. So let's take this fin and let's just give this sort of also 
that kind of a little bit of an arch to it. So let's bring this shape out. Follow that up. Come around, come around, come around. So you can see it's, it's all starting to come together a little bit more. So we can create the illusion of a spike by doing this. We'll just make this. So your eye creates the rest of that line work, which is kind of nice. Old comic book trick. So now we sort of have the anal fin there. He's looking good. So we could come in and maybe we could add a spot or two. Maybe I'll do that just as a line because I can in color come in and add different things in there. Or I can come in and even just put just a little bit of a value like this and maybe a little more value in here. Which again brings out the rays and you can see it also brings out the uh, sort of the spacing between you know, you've got a light here. Now your eye makes up the rest of this a little bit easier than it did before. So I'm going to come in. Now I'm going to say I have a little bit of a light coming in from here. So let's play around with pushing a little bit of a dark on this side by thickening that line. A little bit of a dark in here. And we can start to push that space and push those things a little bit more. So now you can see it feels a little darker, a little heavier down in here. So let's just go on and let's do a couple things here. We'll add just a couple little spots and dings, you know what I mean? That's always the fun stuff to me is adding the little things at the end, you know, the sort of uh, what I always call adding the pimples to the monster, you know, where you can just play a little bit with how some of the surfaces might change a little or they might be a little rounder, they might have a different kind of feel to them. I'm going to come in and I'm going to push this a little bit more. Push those darks so that you can see, you know, if that feels like a light side, dark side. And even if I push that a little bit more, you can see starting to get a little real, almost this crevices as his skin is becoming even sort of craggier and darker and, you know, deeper. It's no longer just a nice little fold like this so if you came in and created a nice little fold by putting the dark in it's got that sort of feeling of that you're going into that sort of craggy thing so let's just create another little surface here and now we got to bring this fin in so let's bring in the tail fin but i want to bring that back for some reason i just want to bring that forward Give it just a completely different kind of sweep. Because the one thing I've always loved about fish is that they don't have any feel for gravity in a sense. They can move up, they can move down, they can move sideways. They can move in so many different directions. So what that sort of adds is kind of a neat little mystery to these guys that I think that's just a lot of fun. So that means that they don't always... I mean, we are sort of symmetrically, asymmetrically balanced, but you can kind of see that it, you can play with that and really have some fun with it that, you know, not all fins are perfectly round, not all, you know. So, you know, as you look at different people, you know, everyone's got a different shaped nose, everyone's got a different shaped hand, fingers. So it's the same thing with fish, too, you know? They all have a unique characteristic, what the eye is, what the tail fin is, how some of these things move, everything else. So let's just keep rocking along here and see what happens. Maybe make that a little bit darker. Okay, so now we've got that. Now we've sort of got these things. So, our guy's taking shape here pretty nicely. I think he's kind of fun. Now, what I did is I jokingly started out with the eye, saying to you that, you know, everyone says that the eye can be the gateway to the soul. It's the most important thing. 
But now what I've done is I've come in and I've created this whole fish and I'm playing with him or her. And I'm now gonna just use the contour to pop out some of these things a little bit more. And he's starting to take shape. So let's do this. Let's come in here. Now what I have to ask myself is do I wanna, and let's add a few more of those textures like this up here but we won't make the lines as thick and we won't make them as deep just so it looks like as he grows even more all that sort of texture is going to take over you know every big armored plate on his face and in his body and all that or her i'm sorry but here we go so now the hard part is what kind of an eye do you want you know do you want to have a an eye with an iris? Do you want to have something that might follow that? Is it big? Is it small? You know, so if we came in and we created just a little tiny small iris, you can see the kind of look. He looks a little shocked. So let's come in here once and let's do a, a little bit of an oval like this. And so if we leave a little white highlight in there, he, yeah, it gets a little bit more of a nasty feel there. So let's, well, I don't know. I don't mind that. So this is where the things that you can have fun. So I'll just sit down and I'll go check out a book and I'll sit down and I'll look at just different eyes on different fish. I'll look at different types of scales, different kinds of shape, you know, the armored corridors and things like that. But what I might want to do is just because I'm coming in here and I'm letting some of these other textures pull up a little bit more, the thing that's starting to happen a little bit is that that's becoming a very smooth object. So that would be something that would stand out if you were seeing him as a prey and what would eat him would be, you know, pretty. So let's come in here and let's just take and create maybe a little bit of a color band that might go through in there. But I'll just create it now as a line. So if we go in and color it, now all of a sudden that sort of drops that little guy back in there and hides the eye. Because, you know, you want to protect your eyes, especially if you're in a fight for your, you know, food, whatever it is. So, let's come in. Let's just, I'm just going to come in now. What I'm going to do is kind of come around and just increase the contour a little bit to maybe pop him off the page. So... Now, the hard part, you're gonna figure out a name for them. So, there you go. There's a little idea, a little concept, give you a little idea of how I think about stuff as I'm drawing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. And if you would like to see more, please leave a comment, click like, or share below. I'm Mark Nelson. If you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe or follow button, and I'll see you next time.